Welcome to worship this day at Hosanna Lutheran Church. We are glad you are here with us. A few announcements today before we get started with our worship service. First, during this season of Advent, we would like to remind you that we will have an additional weekly worship held right here on our YouTube channel. And these worship services will include faith stories from members of Hosanna. They will be available starting each Wednesday morning. And we hope that you're able to tune in and participate in this special worship during the season of Lent. On February 21st, we will be hosting a drive up uh, communion at Hosanna where families and individuals may drive up in their car, receive the elements, and then proceed to the parking lot where we will participate in the liturgy and blessing of the elements as we partake in Holy Communion. This drive up uh, Holy Communion will begin at 10 a.m. And finally, as a reminder, please double check your newsletter and the e-news, which you should be receiving weekly, regarding the various forms of ministries happening right now within and through the members of Hosanna. The God's Work Our Hands All Year Long Ministry is working on projects and information is available in the e-news. And additionally, there's some special things coming up in March, including Bible studies, that all of that information is located um, in the e-news or in our newsletter. Thanks so much for joining us in worship. Welcome. I'd like to take this time to invite you to join us in the Praying in Color class beginning this Tuesday at 6.30 here in person at Hosanna for up to nine people or on Zoom. If you are at home with your families, it's a great family activity. Give everybody a notebook or a piece of paper, some pieces of paper, grab your colored pencils, or skinny markers, and join us for a time of prayer together. Or you can join us on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. here at Hosanna. I thought I would answer a couple questions that people have been asking me. And the first question that I've been asked is, do I have to be an artist? And the answer is no. I'm a stick figure drawer. I am not a fancy artist or drawer at all. But if you possess the skills that you can draw something like this or this or this or this, you have the skills to do praying in color. Another question I often get is, will I have to pray aloud? No. You don't even have to use words if you don't want to. Praying in color is, is a prayer that you can draw shapes and color. We can write words in, but you're not going to share your prayers aloud with each other or have to think of and pray a prayer aloud during this time. I'm also asked, do I have to share my drawings with others? And the answer to that is only if you choose. I've taught this class before. Some people choose to share their drawings and share their prayers. Others don't. Either way is perfectly fine and you are not going to be put on the spot to share prayers. I wanted to talk just a bit about the benefits of using Praying in Color. I did Praying in Color late spring in the midst of COVID when people were starting to get tired and the anxiety of COVID was just starting to ramp up. We did Praying in Color over Zoom and I gathered with anywhere between 12 and 20 people on Zoom. And what we found is it was a chance for those gathered to pray to slow down and have some time away. It felt different for kids who were doing distance learning, but, it gave, but they joined us and it gave them a time to slow down and to pray in a safe way and in a way that wasn't a demanding instruction. It was just a place that people would be able to gather to just pray and breathe. So I want to encourage you to check us out 
Um, it's a relaxing activity. It also is really kind of fun to be able to go back in your notebook and look at old prayers. Now, if I can find my old notebook from last spring and, and the summer and fall, hopefully I'll be able to share with you the prayer that led me here to Hosanna. Yes, folks, when I discerned my call to be your pastor, I used praying in color to help me discern where God was calling me. So hope to see you there. We still have spots available. If you'd like to join us, please either send me an email or give me a call. Look forward to seeing you and having you join one of the classes. See you in worship. Bye. Let us join together in our call to worship. Again and again, we come to this space. Again and again, we gather as community. Again and again, we move closer to God. Again and again, God is here. God chooses us. God loves us. God will lead us to wholeness. So again and again, let us worship Holy God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a time of confession and forgiveness. Again and again, God meets us where we are. God's love knows no bounds which is hard for us to understand and easy for us to forget. Therefore, in confession, we remember together that we are not alone. And in a united, unified voice, we once again ask for God's grace in that holy reminder. Beloved people of Hosanna, please pray with me. O oh God, who meets us where we are, there is nowhere we can go that you are not. You were with Jesus at his baptism. You were with him in the wilderness. And even in the in-between, you were there, saying aloud, this is my beloved. We know that you are with us too, in the good, the bad, and everything in between. But so often, we act like we're alone. Instead of coming to you with our hurt, we hold it in or cast it on others. Instead of coming to you with our joy, we credit ourselves and offer you nothing. How can we long for a deeper relationship with you while living like you are nowhere to be found? Forgive our self-centered ways. Remind us that in each and every breath and every step, you are there. You are the God who meets us where we are. Behind, before, behind, above and below, within and around. Amen. Dear family of faith, beloved of Hosanna, if you hear nothing else today, hear this. God is here. God sees you. God knows you. God meets you at the edge of every new beginning. And God calls you beloved. We are washed by water. We are called beloved. Thanks be to God for a love like that.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood, you saved the chosen and in the wilderness of temptation. You protected your son from the sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us. That wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to worship and the children's message for this morning. Today I want to talk to you about journeys and trust. Now Lent is often referred to as a journey between Ash Wednesday and Easter. And trust means when someone says something, you believe, you know it will happen. We trust your parents, but more importantly we trust God. Because when God says something, we know it'll happen. We know we can trust God. Now after this part, we're going to have the lessons for today. And I'm going to talk about two of the lessons that will help understanding a little bit more about journeys and about trust. Now the first lesson is Noah. But it's not Noah gathering the animals and building the ark. This is after. This is the flood is over. So here we have the water is gone. We have land. And the ark is now on the land. There's our lovely ark. God has opened the door, and the animals have come out. Noah and his family have come out. But Noah has a, okay, now what kind of moment. I think if I were Noah, I'd be a little bit scared. Let's think about it. The earth has been under water for 40 days. Now, in Bible speak, a lot of times that just means a really long time. So, the ark has been on the water, but the earth has been covered for a long time by water. I would guess there were no houses left. The only animals are the ones that came out of the ark, so there aren't any animals. There aren't any people. It's just Noah, his sons, and their wives. There are only eight people. Noah's got to be thinking, my journey is not over. I made it through the flood because of God saving us. But what's next? What's next on our journey? I think he'd be a little bit scared. But God said, you can trust that I will not send a flood again. And God gave us a signal. He put the rainbow in the sky. So here's our rainbow. Huh. Not very dark. See if I can make it a little better. Anyway, God put the rainbow in the sky as the signal, the sign that he would never cover the earth again. We can trust God. Noah and his family could trust God. God gave a sign. God is trustworthy. We can trust him. Later, they'll talk the gospel lesson. The gospel lesson is Jesus in the wilderness. Think of Jesus going on a journey into the wilderness, maybe like a camping trip. But this is the worst place ever to go camping. What the wilderness is, is there are mountains. So I'm going to draw some mountains. And there are rocks. Here's some rocks. And there's some more rocks. There's very little water. So maybe we got a cactus here. We got a nice sororo. We got some scrubby looking trees. So here's Jesus out here in this wilderness. And what does Jesus take him with him on this journey? He doesn't take anything. No food, no water. 
and he's out there for 40 days. And again, he's out there a long time. But he trusts God. God said, I'll be with you. So he trusts God. While he's out there, the devil, the evil one, comes and wants Jesus to do all kinds of terrible things. But Jesus says, no. I believe in God. I trust in God. I know God will be with me on my journey. So that's the message for today. We are all on a journey. We're all um, going on this Lenten journey. And no matter what, God is with us. COVID has come. Schools are closed. Lots going on. But God is with us. We know we can trust God. So thank you for listening, and now the service will continue. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Today's reading is the conclusion to the flood story. Because of human sin, God destroys the earth by flood, saving only Noah, his family, and the animals on the ark. Yet divine destruction gives way to divine commitment. As in the first creation, God blesses humanity and establishes a covenant with all creatures. God said to Noah and his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for the first Sunday in Lent is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted in all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimony. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 
And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn apart and the spirit in the form of a dove descending upon him. A voice came from heaven. You are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was with wild beasts and the angels ministered to him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, here we are again. A few short weeks ago, the first Sunday of Epiphany, we celebrated the baptism of our Lord. We heard the words and the proclamation from the heavens to Jesus. You are my son, the beloved, the chosen and marked by my love. On that Sunday, we were reminded that in our baptism, we are welcomed into the family of God. And we in Christ too receive the identity, beloved chosen, marked by God's love. This past Wednesday, we once again gathered together outside in our parking lot and together in a part in worship. And we were reminded again with ash on our forehead that we are dust and to, from dust we shall return. But the mark we received on our forehead wasn't just a smudge of ash. It was in the shape of a cross. We were also reminded, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. And from dust, we will rise to new life in Christ. Yes, we are chosen and we are loved by God. We are called beloved. And this is an important place to begin our Lenten journey. It's an important place for Jesus as well in the life of his ministry. Beloved. Before Jesus is driven into the wilderness. His father proclaimed and reminded him, you are my beloved son, chosen, marked by my love. In you, I am well pleased. Take a moment, let that word soak in. Beloved. I invite you to listen to a blessing written by Jan Richardson. It's called Beloved is where we begin. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you. Do not go without letting this echo in your ears. And if you find it's hard to let it in your heart, 
do not despair. That's what this journey is for. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching sun or the fall of night. But I can tell you, on this path, there will be hope. I can tell you that on this path, there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us bearing comfort and strength, that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves in toward our ear and with their curious insistence, whisper our name, beloved. Beloved, beloved. Before Jesus begins his ministry, he is driven into the wilderness, but not before he was named, claimed, and proclaimed God's beloved. Mark's gospel tells us immediately after Jesus' baptism, the Spirit drove him or sent him. Even some translations say pushed him. Pushed Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. Mark, unlike Matthew and Luke, tells us very little about the temptations of Jesus. But Mark tells us there were wild beasts and angels with him, angels who waited upon him. Jesus is not in the wilderness alone. He's there with wild beasts and angels. The angels served him. The angels took care of him. So what does this mean for us? Why is this an important gospel for us on the first Sunday of Lent? Well, before Jesus enters his ministry, he earned some earthly credibility. The word became flesh, fully human, fully divine, fully human, fully tempted knows what it's like to be pushed into the wilderness. Jesus, fully human, the voice from heaven, wasn't just identifying Jesus, but reminding Jesus that as he enters into the wilderness to remember who he is, and his relationship with God. Jesus, chosen, marked by love, and held by God as beloved. Jesus trusted the voice, the trusted voice of God reminds Jesus that he can trust and rely on God during this wilderness time. Now, Jesus doesn't go into this wilderness alone. Jesus is in the hand of the Spirit into the wilderness. The Spirit drives him, pushes him, takes him into the danger zone. You know, into that place of what is and what is to be promised. What is and what is promised that we will receive. This is the place of Flint. This is what we practice and rehearse 
throughout the season of Lent. We acknowledge what is in our lives and we cling to the promise of what is to come. But this gospel news is good news for us far beyond our Lenten journey. There are many times in our lives we find ourselves in these times of wilderness. That in between place of what is and what is promised. Oftentimes, like Jesus, we don't walk into these wilderness periods, but we find ourselves pushed and even dropped there. Times of temptation. Times when we face things that scare us like wild beasts. Health concerns. Disabilities. Cancer diagnosis mental health issues, financial difficulties, loss of a marriage, loss of a loved one. The list goes on and on. There are many ways and many times we may feel lost and alone. Here's the good news, my friends. We do not face these times alone. We are named and claimed by a God who personally knows the struggles of the wilderness. The one who's calmed the wild beasts, the one who serves and cares for you as Jesus was cared for by the angels. Beloved people of God, hear these words. We do not do this alone. We journey through the wilderness of life with a community of people who share this ancient story. We retell it again and again. This retelling of this story has sustained from generation to generation. And we go hand in hand, in the hand of the Spirit of God. A God who promises to be with us because God is with us. God loves us. God calls us beloved. Our Lenten theme this year calls us again and again. It calls us to again and again return to the cross. Return to the cross even in the wilderness times. Again and again, return to hear. To hear the story. To hear the words of promise and words of hope. Hear these words. God chooses you. God loves you. And God will lead you to wholeness. In the meantime, let us remember this. God promises on this path there will be help. That on this way, there will be rest. That you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this. That fly to meet us, bearing comfort and strength. That come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence, whisper our name, beloved, beloved, beloved. 
again and again. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated with the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share peace with those around you or to utilize technology to share peace with someone else in your life. We are worshiping together but apart. And it's important for us all to remember that the ministry of Hosanna continues 
through your continued sharing of your financial gifts, as well as your time and talents. We invite you to use this time to prepare your offerings or offer to send or send them in electronically. We want to thank you in advance for your generosity as we give back to God what God has given to us through our gifts and our offerings. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior and Lord. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, again and again you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, again and again you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, again and again, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, including Elna, Carol, Cindy, Chuck, Joanne, Becky, Mary Lou, and Dan. And support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, again and again you choose us. You love us and you restore us to wholeness. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. As you leave our time together, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk towards justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again. Until God's promise day, know that God chooses you. God loves you. God will lead you to wholeness. Go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord, thanks be to God.